All right. Hello, all. Welcome to the Fantasy and Sci-Fi Fanatics podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Kubal, and I have with me today, Mark. Mark, want to go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Hi, yeah, sure. My name is Mark Timoney. I am the author of The Blood of the Spear, book one of the Eye of Eternity series. A uh, longtime reader and fan of the fantasy and sci-fi genres. Um, and I'm really pleased to be here today talking to you. You know, I got to say, Mark, I, you know, I'm friends with Felix and, uh, you know, a couple other people that shared your book instantly, uh, you know, when it came out and even before that. And as soon as I saw the cover, I was like in love with it. And then I yeah. went to read your blurb uh, and I was like, man, this is the book for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Excellent. I, I, I felt at home. I, it was definitely, yeah. I'm a huge Forgotten Realms fan. And I felt like you had the best of, you know, a lot of those just different tropes and, you know, just the things I like. And I'm still really excited. I held off. So I do have to warn you, I held off. I got the Kindle, but I do want the paperback. And I held off okay. because I'm actually going to buy it tomorrow and do a video on the YouTube channel showing people where okay. to buy the book. Um, cool. Because <laughs> I just went to, I just went to Amazon and it said, oh, you bought this book. And I'm like, no, 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 no. When one does not simply buy Mark's, you know, Kindle. It, we need... I bought the Kindle version. Yeah. <laughs> I need the physical version. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, that doesn't count. So I'm really excited yeah. for, for that to come in. So Excellent. I can't wait to get that tomorrow. And I'll be sitting there like, like you know, just giddy waiting every day for uh, for the book mail for that one. Because I, yeah. I, like I, like I told you, I'm definitely going to be printing that. Um, Staples here actually does that. And they do it really well with a high grade printer. Uh, and they actually back them and map them for you and frame them. Uh, and they have a nice little deal going on. So I have you um, that I'm doing that for. Clayton Snyder actually um, has his co-authored book with uh, Michael R. Fletcher. I actually yep. just interviewed Clayton earlier, uh, Nordisco Groans. Uh, so we just talked about that today. I like that that first cover that Clayton did. It's just, it's very Russian fantasy, yeah. uh, fantasy and noir. And yep. yeah, so I'm going to actually print both of them and actually put them um going down in our basement where my office is they'll be down going on the stairs with a couple other covers so yeah cool. yeah i can't wait to have the book down there <laughs> yeah it was an absolute joy working with felix um i didn't have any idea of what i actually wanted on the cover i had never worked with a with an image like even from any scene within the book i'm just like i don't know what you know makes a good cover i can tell you if i like a cover or not yeah, yeah. i could tell you when you know i've worked in the book trade for 20 20 oh, wow. plus years now wow. um retail sales side wow. um but i could tell when books come in if it's going to sell or if it's yep. not going to sell um if a cover will work or or um uh, stand out on the bookshelves in a shop um i can't do that with my own i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same with like, if I pick up somebody's book and I read it, I know if the writing, you know, if it works for me, if it doesn't, I've yeah. got no idea if my stuff works for other people or not. I've had really good feedback, so I presume it does. But um, personally, I'm too close to it, I guess. So I don't have that same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feedback. Doesn't have a feeling other people get from me. Uh, oh, f from reading my work uh, for me myself. So um. Felix and I, we had, there was a lot of um, backwards and forwards in emails talking about different parts of the book and different scene, particular scenes and um, art that I like. And I grew up um, reading uh, Dragonlance and, oh, and Forgotten Realms, right? Yep. So that was my start in fantasy. It wasn't Lord of the Rings or anything like that. It was actually Dragonlance Chronicles. That's like, oh my God, there's this whole thing out there that is like these stories I have in my head. What is it? Give me more. Um, and all the art that well, it was what TSR back then when yep. I started. Yep. And then, um, yeah, then Wizards of the Coast and yep. artists they employed to do different things or to do different, um, you know, art in the Dragon magazine and everything was just like, still to this day inspires me. Oh yeah, it's legendary. Um, yeah. Iconic, so, you know, iconic. Yep. Yeah. So Felix and I went through a whole heap of, you know, talking about favorite, favorite pictures and images and stuff like that. And uh, just let him go. And yeah. he came up with the cover and I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. And it's actually a scene in the book as well. So oh, like cool. you'll, you'll recognize it when you get to it. Perfect. Um, so 
you know, not all covers need to be a scene from the book. It okay. can just be a representation of character or place. Yeah. Um, but this was actually a scene in the book, and I was just like, yeah, yeah cool. great. It's, um, it's funny. I was, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was talking to one of my one of my editors, and I was saying, I don't know what what scene to use and choose. <laughs> she just started rattling off. You could do this scene. You could do that scene. You could do this scene. I was just like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> so I had a place to start then um, with oh, Felix cool. after we were doing our yeah. conversations. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I just, it's interesting that you said that um, with, you know, just with Felix, because I, uh, I listened to the Wizards, Warriors and Words podcast, um, yeah. where Felix was a guest and uh, twice already. And I like think it was the second time. And he said, he's like, you know, I really, he goes, some people want you to do this exact, you know, thing and this person. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I do that. And then I went to my artist and, you know, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to give you a layout and just yeah. tell you and then just let you go. And I'll have to send it to you, actually. The, the, I have this angelic race of beings and these warriors. And he, my artist, Caleb, did the best job. And it was because yeah. I listened to Felix, you know, and I, I just said, okay, do something like this instead of this. I said, I had some poses and things. I said, just go with it. And what yeah. he gave me was so much better in my head. And that's what Felix yeah. was saying. He's like, I want a little bit of direction. He goes, then I just like to go. And he's like, I'm the artist. I'm like, that's yeah. And, you know, it's, it really... I would recommend that to people, you know, like give them a little direction. Yeah. And then let them, let them do their job. I, yeah. yeah. I was second guessing for a while when he first started um, suggesting stuff. It was like, ah, oh, I don't want, uh, you know, the, the character's face. So maybe you can see them from behind because mm -hmm. I want people to have their own idea of what the character looks like. And then I was like, you know what? I hired you for a reason. I really like your work. Yeah. Just do whatever you want you know here's like a basis here's what i've talked about he asked me questions he asked for clarification he sent through samples he asked oh, wow. for feedback um so it was really really easy to work with and as soon as i just let go of it and just said you know i, I hired you because i like your stuff i need to trust you yeah. and your process so and as soon as i did that it was just easy and then it was like yep no nah, awesome love it all and then um, I was obviously had spoken to um, Sean King as well, who did my um, cover oh, design. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the you got the, the best that, combo the right there, <laughs> right? Yeah, it should they should basically just start um, Ortez King Productions or something, right? I we I just was uh, listening to Mike talk about that the other day. He was like ranting somewhere on Facebook about it, and I was like, <laughs> yes, I was like, do it. I'm like, I said, I was like, everybody hires you both separately. I'm like, yeah, why not just do it together, you know, like. I, I think yeah. that'd be a terrific idea. Yeah. So once we had like the basic, this is it, and I'm going to work, and Felix was going to work on refining from there. Um, we brought Sean into the th email thread as well, and then he started, you know, giving his feedback and stuff. And so there was a lot of collaborative stuff in the final phases um, until you know Felix was like, right, okay, I'm done. This is it. And then Sean went and did his thing off the file. So. Um, and yeah, I was so, so happy good. with how it turned out. Yeah, it so good. Like I honestly, I said to Felix because I, I had a question. I said, Felix, I said I need a banner man. I'm like, I I don't know who to talk to. I go, I don't know what style yeah. art this is. So I message him on Facebook, and he's always really cool. And he's like, Yeah, he goes, Let me think about it. He's like, It's late here. I go, I'll get back to you tomorrow. And I'm thinking like slammed, you know. I'm thinking, Oh, I'll hear back from him in a week. The next morning, literally his morning, right? gets yeah. up at like 7 30 I was up by eight I thought I was up early on a Sunday and he messaged me he's like hey you want you know minimalist you want this you want that and he goes you should just look at Adobe stock images or look at this artist and really just do it yourself it'll be a lot cheaper and I I was like wow and then I had my buddy later that day we took a look and he's my yeah. tech guy and he's like yeah let's do it this way I'm like and it was it was really good you know because I was like I it opened up a whole new world and that's what Clayton and I talked about earlier is he, Clayton uses those same Adobe images and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. plays them in Photoshop and gets really good yeah. results. But I, I was telling Felix, I was like, he's like, yeah, that's what I did for, you know, this cover. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, that's why I want it now. Cause ever since, you know, he did your cover, yeah. I'm like, I, that type of art to me now, it just, it opened up a whole new world. <laughs> I feel like and that's gotta be my yeah. favorite cover in the, I don't even know what cover, honestly. That's just the, my favorite cover now, like by yeah. far. 
Yeah, I actually need to learn how to use um, Photoshop. <laughs> I've got like no <laughs> idea. And I see so many um, authors, especially indie authors, you know, they have like their basics if some are a little bit more advanced and, you know, they do their own banners and stuff and advertising. I've been using Canva and I found that really good. Um, okay. But my own knowledge of what I can do with the tools is limited. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, just having a broader understanding of their capabilities within either Canva or Photoshop yeah, would yeah. help so much in terms of um, pro, pro creating um, banners that pop and yeah. really work. So um, that is something I'll be looking into in the future, but it's kind of like, uh, I just want to write. I want somebody yeah. else to do all that stuff for me. But then at the same time, it's like, I see all this stuff coming out. I'm like, oh, I want that. I want something like that for me. Yeah, <laughs> I need yeah. to have it. I'm missing out because I don't have it. No, I, I, I definitely understand that feeling. I, yeah. I, I just talked to a couple of people about that, actually. Like I, yeah. you know, I talked to some people about, I don't know, like the advertisements and stuff. And one of my buddies, he's like, well, let me do some, because he used to do the Amazon ads and well, not for books, but for, you know, other products. And mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, I know how to do it. He goes, let me do some research, you know, tell me what you want to do, that kind of thing. And yeah. I'm like, okay. And, you know, we, I, he's like, I just, I found now it's like, if I don't actually write my book, I'm worried about other things. And I'm actually done with my first draft. So I'm like, I need to get going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, my friend goes, my best friend goes, you need to stop worrying about all these other things. And he goes, you need to start talking to other authors and figure out what yeah. they're doing so you can get focused <laughs> yeah like, yeah that's what i'm trying to do now so yeah it can become a little bit of a um of a procrastination technique as well yeah, you know, yeah. looking at all these other things while you just yeah. well, which i did for many years yep. with my own book with blood of the spear it's just like oh yeah no i finished a dr x draft and it's like oh i've got these other things i need to focus on now um <laughs> while i just wait to go back and do another rewrite or another yeah, read yeah. through and it's like oh yeah no fun times <laughs> Yeah, right. My my friend uh, put up a really funny meme. He's like, writing his life, and then it went like dot dot dot, and then it had like a plot of grave, and it was like writing his death. <laughs> and I thought that's just so funny because you know, like you do waste a lot of time, you know, just yeah. doing like Twitter. I have to stay off Twitter now because I take a break, and then I just like my mind just needs it. And now I go and you know I'll go maybe to the gym or you know use my basement gym, or I actually sometimes just go for a walk now. Uh, I try to just not touch my phone in between yep. my reading time. Otherwise, it, I, and I don't even really like my phone that much. But during yeah. that time, it's like my brain wants to shut itself. I'm like, no, you need to open up and, and actually get started rather than, yeah. you know, be done in 15 minutes. So, yeah. no, I'm I found I find Twitter can be a little difficult for me to inter interact on. Um, I'm a I can be a bit of a loner at times anyway. I am by nature a loner and Twitter is so social and I'm just yeah. like, oh, I don't always know how to interact. Um, so I spent a lot of my time trying to build a presence on Instagram where you speak with pictures. Yep. Um, and I'd find a lot of like fantasy art and stuff and I'd repost that or I'd write um, little flash fix about that inspired, that the image inspired me oh, with and cool. I'd post those things up and stuff like that. Um, and so my phone, if it goes up, it's always Twitter notification, uh, Instagram notifications <laughs> rather than Twitter. Um, I don't have notifications coming from Twitter or from Facebook. I don't want to know if I want to see it. I'll wait and see it when I get on the desktop and then I'll look at it. Um, although I do get notifications for you know, DMs and stuff like that. And I'll go and check those out. But um, threads or people following me or mentioning me, it's like, no, nah, it waits until I'm actually on the desktop to see it. And that's a good point that's, too. I know that you had, I, I think you and I had talked about that um, through direct message on Twitter where you had, or maybe it was a comment somewhere on there where you had mentioned your Instagram presence. And I've been trying to do better with mine. I don't know why Twitter just is easier yeah. for me for some reason, but that's, that's interesting that you mentioned that. So I yeah definitely have to take a look at yours and kind of see, you know, what the difference is. Yeah, no, I love there. Instagram. Love it. I would um, also do stuff about, um, so I do, kind of do what they call uh, bookstagram. So I'd put up pictures of the books I've read or, oh, have, yep, yep. or are reading and stuff like that. And I've been doing it for many, many years. So I have oh, a library okay. of stuff that I just like, oh, yeah, this is a good one. Let's do a picture of this and I'll tell you what I thought about it and why I love it. Oh, that, anything that is, yeah, anything that is on my um, bookshelf is something that I've loved and I've decided to keep. The ones that were like, nah, it was all right. 
but it's not a keeper yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. stay on the bookshelf and these <laughs> days I tend to um go ebook first and if the ebook is amazing it's like yep I want a, a physical copy of that thank you yeah that just um make sure I don't take up all this room with physical books in the house especially <laughs> ones that I wasn't as involved in as I might other, might be otherwise yeah, yeah. I, that's one thing I was doing recently was just getting more just of the ebooks just to save room because <laughs> like, yeah, yeah wooden run bookshelves are, yeah wooden bookshelves are hard to find and I'm like I got rid of like a whole shelf and I actually brought them to school well, it's not place, even the so. bookshelves it's the space yeah <laughs> it's the space they take up I had piles of books stacked in front of my bookshelves <laughs> because I couldn't fit any more on I've had to cull unfortunately um and make very you know uh discerning choices as to which which stays and which goes <laughs> that's funny yeah. yeah, no, I definitely know that feeling. Oh, I did want to mention too for people that your book talk um, uh, for the TikTok has been really good too. Uh, I really oh, enjoyed you. those. So uh, I've been looking at yours to try and figure out what I can do to uh, um, get some people. Yeah, that's a massive, massive step for me. Yeah, actually, getting in front of the camera is a massive tip for me. It's like photos. Don't like them. <laughs> no thanks. Don't want to don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Um, <laughs> I, I liken it to a, there's, um, I don't know how many, I'm probably showing my age. There was a UK show called Absolutely Fabulous in the okay. 90s. And um, it's a comedy. And one of the episodes had the editor of a magazine. She had to get a headshot. And people were saying how great it is. And she was like, oh, it's journos with egos. I don't like them. It's, <laughs> it's what did she say? It's, it's bad enough you have to read half the crap that's written without seeing a photo of the bastard who wrote it as well. And I'm like, this is how I feel about books, about, about authors and photos. It's like, just read my stuff. You don't need yeah. to see my face. <laughs> yeah, why, why do the author photo, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Nobody, nobody ever but, likes them. <laughs> no, but it's like, I've taken too long to get my book out. It's become this whole new thing now. Social media, no, we want to see your face talk to us entertain us you know with videos and then we'll go and buy your book and i'm like oh god so it's, it has been a bit of a learning curve um, yeah, yeah. and i think it has as has it has helped me come out of my shell a little bit for this sort of stuff um and even just learn the trick of kind of not looking at yourself when you're doing the recording don't get distracted oh, that's what distracts me i'm just like no don't want to see myself so you kind of like look through it and just do your thing yeah. Um, so I've been very slow in putting stuff up, partly because I don't like doing the recording and partly because I'm like, I don't know what to do next. So when I, I saw five times, I think, <laughs> and then yeah. like that was horrible. Yeah. And it's like, I've got one, I post once every two weeks, which does absolutely nothing for my presence on there with the algorithm. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah. it's useless. You need to do it daily and possibly multiple times a day. Yeah but i do what i can yeah <laughs> so let's say twitter twitter uh you know for my first podcast for my friend alan uh who has written for marvel and has his own kickstarter for yeah his superhero comic which i had backed recently so if you guys haven't make sure you check out episode one of this podcast yeah. on a youtube channel uh so i go right on and it was like my birthday too so i went and did it five times that day on both my twitter accounts and i think it was like Usually I get blown up. Like today, I got blown up. Must have been a hundred times between both accounts, but like yeah. all day. And I barely even posted. I think I posted once in the morning for both, and maybe once midday. So you know, four tweets. And then yeah. that day, I probably posted fifteen times. I might have gotten like five interactions, maybe. Yeah you know maybe eight it is like yeah <laughs> it is really difficult um it's you've got to really be interacting with people yeah. you know not just liking the stuff they post but like yep. responding to them and that's sometimes where i struggle the most because i am pretty quiet most of the time i don't have a lot to say usually i'm one of those people in a group who kind of sits quietly on the side and you know laughs at the jokes and might say something every now and then but i'm not like the the lead the lead spokesperson and i'm not always the life of the party so it's sometimes difficult to get that interaction going and if i'm not comfortable with someone i don't feel i know them well i hold back um so that's something I've been trying to put in, in, in my Instagram as well, uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, to, and that then, you know, they obviously become more um, responsive to interacting with you and yeah, yeah. seeing your stuff that gets posted and things like yeah. that. 
So, and then I try not to always be constantly posting, banging people over the head with buy my book, you know, so it, that sometimes becomes difficult. It's like, but that's what I'm here to do, sell my book. Yeah. Well, it's funny that okay. you said that. Yeah, like Lindsay Broker um, and Joel, uh, now I'm going to mess it up, Rallo, I think, um, they have a podcast uh, that's all about, it used to be all about with another author and it used to be all about um, how to sell your fantasy or sci-fi book and how to market. And now they actually did basically where it's like, uh, it's all about like how to get a hundred thousand dollars in sales per year um, yeah. with the marketing. And they talk about that a lot um, two years ago, right before the pandemic and how they said it's Twitter, especially was like, nobody for the most part, Facebook, they do, they want your ad. They want to see your book. AC Cobble, if you ever have a second, um, go and check out his yeah, yeah. advertisements. They're amazing on mm -hmm. Facebook and uh, Instagram. I've been studying his, uh, okay. but they talk about his are awesome. But uh, they talk about on Twitter though, where people don't want to see that for some reason. Me, yeah. I don't mind. They I want, want to you, interact but, with community. Yeah, they want to interact yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah, and it's just it's interesting. Like Kevin Hearn's on there a lot with just a lot of his adventures and things. Uh, I believe he's in Ontario now. Um, he's going to see this later and then I probably messed it up, but, um, <laughs> he, uh, uh, I see a lot of his interactions and him and I interact a lot and it's just funny. It'll be like a drink that he like goes and makes a drink every week from, you know, yeah. somebody It's just cool, you know, and it's interesting. And, you know, then he'll go over every once in a while and, you know, put the advertisement up and it's just, it's nice because I like to interact and I like to ask yeah. questions about things, but I also like to know what people are doing, you know, I'm kind of yeah, yeah. comes to authors, so it's yeah uh, yeah it's I interesting. Want to see, yeah i see other people doing cool things like that and i'm like oh what can i do and then i'm like i'm just boring i don't have <laughs> any too. cool things like that to do right yeah what's well, like all a, my, um, yeah all my interesting stuff is in reading yeah, you know, yeah that's yeah. that's where all that's come, that comes yeah. into it so it's like well blog about your books and i'm like oh well not my book but the books you're reading and it's i'm kind of i'm kind of done with deep insightful reviews i did it for so many years when i worked mm. um in a galaxy bookshop in sydney and we'd have a newsletter that would go out once a month and everyone in the store took turns of writing a big review but we'd also have to monthly go into what we've been reading and give a little snippet oh, that's on something cool. that we were looking at and after nine years of that i'm kind of like i'm done it's yeah, like you know and the, it also becomes for me if i like a book I like it for the same reasons. Like I like the world building. I like the characterization. I like this particular trope that they use. And like, so I feel like I'm repeating myself all the time. This is amazing world building. Like, this is amazing world building. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yeah, you said that about the last one. Yeah, but it's good for this one too. And in my own mind, I'm just like, oh, broken record, shut up. <laughs> That's how I feel in Goodreads lately. I review, I try to review every book you know, for everybody yeah. I read. And now I'm just like, like Patricia Briggs for Urban Fantasy is one I love. And I feel like I, yeah. you know, she's got the Alpha and Omega and Mercy Thompson. I feel like I say mm -hmm. the same thing for every book. I'm like, I love the story. The world building is awesome. The magic yeah. interaction with people, yeah. you know, it's a great magic system, but it's like, there's only so much you can say. It's like, yeah. I love the book because the, that series. It's my jam. Yeah. yeah you is, know, this and, is yeah, it. Yeah. there's tropes are there and they do a good job. Yeah. It's like, you're, it's a slight, Jim, Jim Butcher is the same way. Like I love yeah. Jim's books, but it's like, you yeah. like them because they're like, my friend says like, it's a, it's a security blanket. You get a, everything sure. you want and then a little bit different. And he's like, that's why they've been so successful. And I'm like, you know yeah. what? I'm like, that's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. And it's also, I think, and I, I touched a little bit of, on this in a um, uh, talk I had with Dave from uh, Fanfly Addict. It's like oh yeah, I got that. Uh, I got that. Yeah, I haven't yeah. Been able to I don't. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Um, I I don't. Um, I don't. Tropes don't worry me. If I've read the same trope a hundred times in fantasy, and generally, genuinely, I have. I don't care about the trope. It's like it's what you do with the world building. It's what you do with the characters. Yeah. Is what you bring to it. And it's this thing. It's like for for centuries we sat around campfires and saying told the same stories about the same heroes and the same gods. It's like I think it's you know it it's kind of inherent in human nature to talk to tell familiar stories. Oh, yeah, yeah, they get changed up every now and then, but it takes a long time to make that quantum leap from one thing to an, from one idea to the next. Yeah. So the same stuff just gets redone, and I'm fine with that 
you know, yeah. give me something slightly new in your world building. Give me different characters I haven't come across. Give me different reasons to fall in love with them um, and present a, a slightly different twist on the framework of the trope that is just so familiar. Oh, it's yeah. like, you know, you've got a house that's got four walls and a roof. You know, how you decorate the inside will be different for every single person. And yeah. that's, that's kind of like... People still want that house. Everybody wants to own yeah, that house. Yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm down, I'm down for that. And that's what I find in the books that I read when I review them. It's because of these things. These are the things I love. And I love this book because it does these things well. It's the same as the last book I wanted to rave about. <laughs> it's the same things that they were done well. So yeah, yeah. Um, I just find that for me... Um, how I feel about writing a review. I'm just like, oh, well, you know, if you've, if you know what I like and if you like the things I do and I'm telling you, I like this because of X, then chances are you'll enjoy it as well. So yeah, there you yeah. go. My reviews yeah. have become <laughs> just that little bit smaller. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's just funny yeah. that you mentioned, you know, the, that people have told the same types of stories because um, so in the Wizards, Warriors and Words, uh, episode is either I think it was two, uh, it was a, like three episodes ago it's about three weeks ago um, Brian Stavely was on there and uh, I met Brian also in Phoenix about eight years ago and him and I talked about just like you know just different stories we were I was waiting in line to go see Kevin Patrick Rutherford and Brandon Sanderson um, and then Michael J Sullivan was there and a few other people were there too it was it was awesome I met like yeah. 30 indie Sounds authors. amazing. Oh, it was, it was absolutely incredible. So I'm sitting there talking to Brian Stavely, you know, and then years later, I'm like, wow, like, you know, this is crazy. Like all these people got huge and, you know, nowadays, and it's just funny to me because we were talking about that, you know, a very similar thing. And I'm like, well, I feel like my, you know, so at the time I said, I feel like my characters are the same. And he yeah. said, he was like, you know, people come for the tropes and they just talked about that, but they, Dirk or Michael or Rob Hayes just said the same thing you said that maybe it was Jed said that people come, you know, for those tropes, they come for that story. And, you know, and we've been telling those types of stories for so long and, you know, how many different um, Luke Skywalkers can you have, you know, how many, yeah. you know, different King Arthur's can you have or, you know, or Jesus or you yeah, know. Cinderella, like, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, and I, it's interesting as you say that, cause I, when I read your description, I thought, oh my gosh, I love, I got my bridge burner shirt on first yeah. in last out. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, and nice. Glenn Cook's The Black Company. I'm like, if it's a mercenary band and there's yeah. a hero there, I'm like, I'm down. Like, give me a Uhtred, a Bedenberg any day of the week. And right. I don't care what setting, I don't care who the author is. I will read that book. So when I saw, you know, your description, I was like, I was sold at the cover. And I was like, there, clearly there's something about this book because Felix doesn't just pick anybody and, yeah. you know, and he picks books that he believes in that he's interested in, even if he hasn't read them. And I thought there's gotta be something here. So when I was reading your description, I was just like sold, sold, sold. And the whole brother thing, I'm like, I get yeah. that because you know, I would go do the same thing for my brother. So yeah, that was, it was really cool. But yeah, I, I like how you mentioned that. Cause that's just what they were talking about. And I thought about it a lot over the last yeah. two weeks or so. So yeah, and you get a lot of people who um, decry the trope and, you know, and whine about it. And so every now and then I, I kind of like, se I second guess myself, I guess. You know, it's it's na the nature of people, um, especially when you put yourself out in the public domain. And then I worry like, oh my God, have I done it? Have I done a, made a mistake? Have I not been, you know, original enough? It's like, oh, this is what I want to read, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's and, what you and that's, write, yeah. yeah, so... I've just, you know, you just have to push that aside and yeah. and uh, not focus focus on it. I mean, something you can't turn off. I don't think. I think it's like you're. It's almost like you're sitting in front of a television and you've got the remote control. The remote control is broken, so you can't change the channel. But you can learn to move your attention away from it, even if it's still going. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of liken it. I liken a lot of things like that to that in my life. Um, that's fair. But that's just um, a good one. I like that. Yeah, it's just one of those things that you know you just you just go with it yeah. allow yourself to have the doubt to to be i i had great feedback from my beta readers i had good feedback from my editors and i still question whether or not i had a good product but i put it out there and i've been getting really good feedback 
um, from my reviewers as well. And it's been like, okay, these people who are reviewing now are all strangers. Yeah. A lot of my beta readers, well, more of my beta readers knew me before they read mm-hmm. it um, to a degree. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, my editors, while I was paying them <laughs> to help me. No, yeah. So, a, you a, know, a cold call reader is totally yeah. different yeah, than, yeah, somebody who's got yeah. a who's sort of personal connection relationship or tied to you. So I, I definitely understand yeah. that. Yeah, so it's kind of only now that I mean I've always believed in my my writing, but I've never been a hundred percent sure, and that's just I think a lack of confidence of myself uh, uh, in my for my part. Um, I think that's a lot but, of people though, you know. Yeah, cause, right. Because you're you're literally taking that thing and it's literally nothing, right? And you're literally I thought yeah. about it yesterday. You're literally making it into an actual physical product, and yeah you're you know there's there's not a lot of things like that you know like you know you you take a you know my friend's like well you take a piece of wood or you know whatever you're making or even metal and you have a thing and you're making another thing this is one of those things that's literally just in your head and you're making it to hopefully fit other people's perspective or experiences and I don't know I haven't been able to find anything else that is quite like it I think it's so hard yeah definitely um, and when the good reviews start coming through and they start praising you for particular aspects of the story that you thought that I thought I might have been weaker at, like telling me how great my characters are and how invested they were in them. And I was like, oh, I thought that was my weakest part. <laughs> Yay, go me. It's not. You actually like these characters. Awesome. That's that's really good. So um, it's really, really good to hear. Yeah. Um, certainly give me a bit of a boost in my um, confidence. Yeah, that's that awesome. regard. So he has a new writer. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to pause here because I know uh, we might be, for some reason, the Spotify just works oh. better for uh, yeah. a 40, 45 minute. Um, do you, I'm, I don't have to work tomorrow. Are you okay I'm with? Fine. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll just send you another link and we'll just okay. split this into a two episode. Sure. And then we can yep. get into the questions because this would be a perfect segue. So. Okay, awesome. And right, give me just one sec here. We'll just do a sign off for this one and then I'll send you another link. Okay. My tech guy likes it because then he doesn't have to split it up and <laughs> it's a lot easier for him. All right, yeah, guys. So we're going to make this a, a two part episode. We talked about too many great things. There was way too much cool stuff in this one. So, well, we, I do want to make sure that we get Mark talking about blood, the blood of the spear. Uh, so we're going to make this a two-parter, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, so we want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Fantasy and Sci-Fi Fanatics podcast. You can find this video on YouTube. We're going to uh, put it on the Twitter, uh, Facebook page that is brand new, and the Spotify channel, which will actually be new tomorrow. So if you're listening to that audio, thank you. Uh, feel free to reach us at Scholars of Uma. At uma at gmail.com. Let us know who you'd like to see on future podcasts, uh, any questions you want to ask future guests or past guests even, uh, and feel free to send us any videos or pictures that are fantasy and sci-fi related. Uh, we'll see you guys later. and Thanks for tuning in. Mark, I'll talk to you here in just a sec, okay? Okay. Thank you. I'll send that link right over to your email. Awesome.